Hello and welcome to Basic Medical Sciences. So now we are going to talk about our Clostridium species, right? So Clostridia species are actually gram-positive rows, which are anaerobes. So we are going to begin with Clostridium botulinum, right? So the reservoirs include soil, stored vegetables, particularly home canned, uh, home canned foods, and also Ziploc storage bags. Other reservoirs include smoked fish and uh, fresh honey. So fresh honey is mainly associated with infants, right? So what happens is in adults, uh, uh, adults like they have a uh, balanced mi microflora, right? So if they eat these spores, these spores will not be able to germinate because there is no anaerobic conditions, right? But in infants, because there is a uh, uh, less less amount of uh, the intestinal flora, the Clostridium spores will germinate and cause infection, right? So uh, for uh, infants, it's actually a specific sign. Uh, so the disease is co also called uh, floppy baby syndrome. So this is how it look like, right? So if you check here, this is uh, a normal baby. If you hold the baby like this, this is the normal position. Uh, but the child with botulism, it will be like this, right? Right. So how is the this uh, Clostridium botulinum transmitted? So I already said it's through spores endospores right so these spores are actually heat resistant uh i also told you that these are uh, bacteria are actually anaerobes and the virulence factor here we are mainly talk talking about uh flagella right so it's motile meaning to say it's h antigen positive right so let's talk about the toxins right so Clostridium botulinum actually have a neurotoxin, right? So the neurotoxin inhibits the release of acetylcholine uh, from the nerves, right? So acetylcholine is the uh, a neurotransmitter for muscle contraction, right? So uh, uh, before showing you like the mechanism, I also want to tell you that uh, the toxin is not secreted, but it's released upon the death of bacterium. Right. So uh, this is the uh, mechanism of botulinum toxin. Right. As you can see, this is the general structure of neuromuscular junction. You can see here uh, the uh, presynaptic membrane and postsynaptic membrane here of both. Here you can see a smooth muscle, a smooth muscle here on both sides here. Uh, here is a synaptic cleft, right? So here there is entrance of uh, botulinum toxin, and you can see it here, right? I also want to remind you about the uh, snare proteins, right? So snare proteins, they include like syntaxin, synaptotagmin, synaptobrevin, etc., right? So these snare proteins, they allow the fusion of uh, like uh, vesicles, synaptic vesicles which contain the neurotransmitter and the presynaptic membrane so upon the fusion there will be exocytosis that's the release of what of uh, uh acetylcholine into the neuromuscular junction right into the synaptic cleft so here the the there will be contraction of muscle right but what happens if there is botulinum toxin, there will be uh, like a uh, destruction of what of snare proteins. Therefore, the membranes will not fuse, right? Okay. Let's talk about the clinical manifestations. There are three main presentations: foodborne bone botulism, infant botulism, and wound botulism, right? So for foodborne bone botulism. Features of foodborne botulism include cranial nerve palsies, uh, muscle weaknesses, 
and respiratory paralysis right so respiratory paralysis is the most common cause of death because if there is paralysis of diaphragm uh, there is no breathing therefore death is imminent right here uh, the second uh, the second form infant botulism right this one uh, present is mainly constipation and flaccid paralysis i talked about uh, uh, floppy baby syndrome right uh, then the last one is wound botulism right so this one uh, it's similar to bone botulism except the absence of gastrointestinal prodromal symptoms now let's talk about treatment of botulism right so firstly uh, there is an antitoxin right so antitoxin is used for foodborne and wound botulism human botulism immunoglobulin right so this human botulism immunoglobulin is used for infant botulism uh, the uh, the other drugs used include uh, penicillin uh, we can also uh, provide hyperbaric oxygen uh, and supportive therapy. So for supportive therapy, this includes incubation and ventilation assistance.